Hey guys, welcome back to another Psycraft episode. The last couple of ones were all about the gold farm and the crafting system. That farm and the whole project is finished. It's pretty successful. The gold farm is running at the moment. We're just waiting to craft the next big batch. But today we're going to work on something else. We want to finish our double chest of every stackable item goal for 1.12. That's something we proposed years ago to have a double chest of each stackable item. So basically for every chest in our main storage. There's still, actually, <laughs> we don't have enough cooked chicken, okay? Um, might need to make a cooked chicken farm as well. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even think uh, we don't have that. But yeah, um, so we finished this goal almost entirely. I got all the, the tough ones like emerald ore, diamond blocks, and so on. Um, what's still missing at the moment are the mop heads. And name text as far as you know. And of course the cooked chicken. <laughs> we might need to make a chicken farm as well. Okay, so name tags. We have a couple stacks, a couple named ones. Um, there's basically two ways um, how we could get a lot of those. Trading with villagers, the librarians sell those, or fishing. Let's actually check out trading, how much effort it would take to yeah, get the name tags by trading. I have to confess it's been ages since I did any trading with the 1.12 villagers. And some of the viewers that have maybe started playing after the villager update yeah, might not even recognize those guys. So there's the white code villagers called librarians, which would sell name tags. Also the trading worked a bit different in 1.12. After a while, trade got locked and then you had a 20% chance that the villager would unlock again. And then you can start trading again. So there's not this limit that you can only trade a certain amount of time per day, but it always had only this 20% chance that the trade would get unlocked for each trade. Okay. Yeah, so we could do this for quite a while, and it's actually quite expensive. It costs 20 emeralds to get a name tag. Um, I don't want to do it, actually. Kind of kind of like the idea of making an AFK fishing farm a lot more. Yeah, let's maybe try to look into that. Also... To be honest, I have no idea how AFK fishing farms work in 1.12. That's something I never really buzzed with. I think during the lifetime of the server, we had an AFK fishing farm once in 1.8. So I actually need to do some research and see how an AFK fishing farm yeah, was actually working in 1.12. So we're searching for 1.12 AFK fish farms on YouTube. This was the top result farm by Sisuma. So we can use this to understand how it worked and adjust it to our needs. So you basically need to aim um, at a block to cast a fishing rod. The problem is that it would wheel in the bobber immediately. But you wouldn't do that if you would aim at a node block. So you need to cast the bobber and then you can aim at the node block in case the bobber is in water, can catch a fish. So we do this here. We aim at the underside of the trapdoor, the side here. Then the bobber would activate the string. And there's some redstone, this will power the node block and, and the trapdoor here to open up and then we aim at the node block behind. So like this. And then it's just a matter of time until we catch a fish. Uh, then we reel it in and the whole thing will be reset. There we go. Alright, so basically we could use this contraption here. Just put a hopper below, filter out everything that is in the name tag. And maybe also the lily pads, we should keep the lily pads. Um, but the problem is this would be rather slow. I think with Lure and Luck of the Sea, you have about a 2% chance to get a name tag each time. And you can get roughly 100 items per hour of this type of farm. So it would easily take more than two months for a single AFK fish farm to get a double chest of name tags. So I would suggest we scale this up. So instead of just using a single bot to fish, we could use multiple. I just want to adjust this farm slightly, maybe make it one by tileable, so it would be a bit more compact. All right, so I changed the design here to make it one by tileable, and you got two bots here that have been fishing for a couple hours. Seems like it's reliable as well. Okay, we got another version here that I can yeah use to show it. So we just rearranged everything and got rid of the redstone dust, which wasn't really necessary there in the back. Um, what you need to do is, you need to aim 
pretty precisely on the top of the trapdoor here. Then hold down right mouse button. The bobber would activate the string and she had a tripwire hook. And then the block here is powered and the trapdoor just opens up. And then you have access to the underside of the note block actually. Okay. Unfortunately, it's not 100% reliable. Sometimes you have to throw the bobber twice or so. I think there's some randomness involved. Okay, let's try it out. There we go. Worked first try. And now we can do the note block fishing. Just gonna try it again. It is not always working. First try. There we go. Sometimes you have to do it twice or so. But it's really not an issue. Okay, so this is the AFK fish farm. Now it's just a question, how large are we going to make it? So we can make as many bot accounts as we want in practice. Um, just not too sure. I think there's actually a limit on our server how many players can join of 100. Mm, should probably stay below that. Maybe go for something like 80 players fishing at the same time. I think it would be quite funny. Oh, there's one more thing I could actually improve. I just tested this. You might have been wondering why I'm using the chest here. So I'm using this block because it's not a full block tall, so I can aim above the chest. But at the same time, um, it prevents the bobber from falling out the side here. So I actually saw that I couldn't use a path block because I saw that, like every block that you put above a path block would destroy it. So like this. But it seems like you can actually put a tripwire hook above. So the half block should actually be better here in this case. Let's try it out real quick. Need a shovel. Oh, you need to make it first and then put the tripwire hook there. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Let's see if this is even better. Oh yeah, this is actually even better because now the bobber can't go anywhere. Now it should actually be reliable. Perfect. All right, I scaled this up and this is exactly what I was hoping for in the end. This actually looks so funny with all the bots doing the AFK fishing. Almost looks like yeah, an arcade where they play some kind of mini game. <laughs> I also put some redstone torches here on top to prevent all of the clicking noise. And it even shows um, yeah, which of the modules are active. Okay, uh, obviously this is a little bit cheaty to use that many bots to do those tasks here. Technically, we could buy 100 accounts as well, uh, which would be quite expensive, of course. Um, but yeah, I don't really see a problem with this. It's quite fun. And all the, again, in terms of items is lily pads and, and name tags, which we probably won't use anyway. So yeah, I think it's just fun. I, I really like this. Okay, so yeah, I'm thinking really... The idea with the arcade could be something for the decoration. So I'm gonna expand this even further to maybe 80 slots and then maybe Miles can help me with the arcade idea.
Alright, so we decided to build the AFK fish farm at our unused shopping district. Because I thought it would fit nicely in there. Could have built this pretty much anywhere except from the nether where we have water. Right there, fits nicely in there. Got a fish indicating yeah, we have where to find the AFK fish farm. We also got a new building here after the TNT. We might even check that out at some point. Uh, let's check out the AFK fish farm with a nice decoration around it. Got a lot of help from Miles. And with help, I mean, Miles was designing 90% of it. Let's maybe quickly fly around, check it out. You can also see it better. We got one huge AFK fishing hole. Let's also take a look inside. So you can basically walk up here and do your AFK fishing, but obviously, we're gonna use. Um, bots in order to do so. Yeah, it looks really good from the inside and outside. All right, so now we need to get 80 bots in place, but not only that, we also need to get fishing rods in the first place. Obviously, we could start with one and then just sort out the fishing rods, but I think it's a bit more efficient if we just go to our trading hall. We actually got pretty much all the book trades from 1.8, only the ones that haven't, that have been added later. 1.10, like Frostwalker, um, we don't have a dedicated villager for, but yeah, so we should have lure, mending, luck of the sea, and unbreaking, which we want. So there we have them. Now it finally pays off that we actually got those villagers five years ago, or even six. Uh, so we even got the best possible trade for luck of the sea, 11 emeralds, and for lure, 14. So 11 would be the best as well, but it's, it's gonna be fine. So all the books have been acquired, I got 81 of each. It's time to use the good old XP farm again. Unfortunately, the server is struggling right now because the gold farm is running, Sky is doing something, storage system is running, so this might take a little bit longer than usual. So I haven't done this noble show in a while, but we got it. Oh, there's a ladder. <laughs> Wait, did somebody take out blocks here? No, everything's normal, okay. That's supposed to be like this. Snow back, and you should see if our XP already placed on the shulker boxes. Now it's just a matter of combining them. And we're back at the AFK fishing farm. Took quite some time to get 81 perfect fishing rods, but we got it done. And I already equipped some of the bots here. Yeah, and they've been fishing for almost 20 hours now. And let's maybe check out what we got so far. So we got almost a double chest of name tags in 20 hours. 45 stacks almost. Should have the same amount of lily pads roughly. Yep, there we go. Also 45 stacks exactly. Yeah, that's pretty good. So we get roughly a little bit less than a double chest a day. And it is enough to reach our goal of just having those items. Um, actually, turns out Oreo already got all the name tags. So there's three shulker boxes of name text that he got by trading. So what I've been doing here is basically not really useful for our goal, but at least now we have an AFK fishing farm on the server. It's been a while since we have an AFK, had an AFK fishing farm on the server, about five or six years. So we also got that done. Maybe it could also be a goal for the server to have yeah, a farm for every item. So we also <laughs> got that done. So it's also quite funny to summon in the bots, they all have different skins. Some are very creative. I think this was my personal favorite. A lot of Steve heads everywhere on the top and the side. <laughs> yeah, it's really funny. But yeah, this is unfortunately the only way to make a lily pad farm, for example. We also have, I think, six or seven um, shulker boxes of lily pads that we gathered while making perimeters mostly. The witch that's always in a swamp biome. So they have usually collected the lily pads before the world eater destroyed the terrain. So yeah, we also don't need those for our goal, but it's kind of nice to have more maybe. Um, so I guess I'm gonna keep this running for maybe five more days. Um, you might have been wondering why we don't have all the slots filled at the moment. We only have 25. That's something I also overlooked again. Uh, they would actually raise the mob cap. So this is beneficial in case of our gold farm, for example, from a couple episodes ago. But here it could become an issue. So if you look at the mob cap, this is the first number at the bottom. 384 is the current mob cap. That means if three more people would join in different areas, then we got hostile mob spawning again. We have roughly 600 shulkers that spawn. Yeah, 
for the each additional AFK fishing account that we add here, would add 15 to the mob cap. And if you fill this up entirely, then we're already at 1200. And then we would have hostile mob spawning on our server again, which we definitely don't want. Not only a hostile mob spawning, incredible hostile mob spawning. So, <laughs> so if you would fly around and there's a mob cap 600, this is pretty rough. So that's why I kept the number here at 25. We could, in theory, also use our additional mob switch with the zombie spawner and have even more bots here, but I think this farm is quick enough and since we don't really need it, as it turns out, I'm just gonna keep this running for, for a week or so and then, yeah, we're, we're kind of done here with the AFK fishing. One more thing that might be interesting to see is the stream of items that we actually have incoming here. So, 25 accounts, get a decent amount of items. Look at that. Obviously, it's quite rare to actually get a name tag or a lily pad. Most of it, like 95% of the items get destroyed. But yeah, it's only the decent amount of items we got here. So we only keep the lily pads and the name tags. Everything else goes into the flames here. Um, what we also had to keep in mind is that we want sky access here because if you don't have that, then the rates would be decreased with rains. So there's always a yeah, bonus you get um, when it's raining, more fish bite, and yeah, get also more of the, the other items. Okay, that's why we have a yeah hole in the roof. Okay, let's check out main storage. So here we get the name tags that Oreo has been trading for. Didn't bring the others over. And let's also check out our lily pet chest. So those are the ones we got from yeah exploring. So we got five shulker boxes and almost a six one. Pretty good. Okay, then let's also maybe talk about some other items we're actually missing. Sponges. That's something we've been working on uh, about a month ago. It's obviously really hard to get a lot of sponges. We need to go to an ocean temple and find the sponge room and mine them there. But that's always an issue for us because we're always trying to keep the world file size low. So what we actually did in order to get more sponges wasn't duping them. We used our world or the resources we have in our explored world to the fullest. So Sky Rising made a little program to scan our complete survival world for any sponge block we could find and each um, container block and each player inventory for sponge items. So with that info that we got, we had a list of 40, well, 45 was roughly, ocean monuments that were not raided yet. So in a stream a couple weeks ago, I was guessing three or four weeks ago, we went to all of those unraided ocean monuments and got all the sponges out of it. So here you can see what we have right now at storage. I think Fox still has another shulker box of sponges. And we still have some sponges and ender chests of yeah, players that I haven't locked on in a couple of years. So this is still an issue. I tried to contact some of the Cycroft members to hand over the sponges they have stored, um, but unfortunately, not everybody replied. So, Helvins, if you're watching this, you still have five stacks of sponges in your inner chest, mate. Be nice if you could get those. Um, yeah, so in order to get a double chest of the sponge items, we would need to explore a little bit more. Um, we did the math. If we take everything we have right now, uh, we're missing five stacks to get a double chest of dry and wet sponges. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna bite the bullet, go a little bit exploring and get five more stacks of sponges. And we also call that challenge complete. Then we gathered enough sponges for that. But yeah, here you can see always the, the issue getting a double chest of each item. Some of the items is just, um, yeah, a bit of a problem. So we did the, the emerald ore, for example, but yeah, some of them we can't feasibly do. So what comes to mind would be the dragon head. You would need to go to 3,500 different entities that have a ship and get the dragon head there. So this is one item we can't get without duping. So of course we would like sponges to be renewable so we don't need to go exploring all the time. There is a feature that we use on the 1.16 Patreon server which also solves the issue of coral blocks not being renewable. If you bow mill one of those corals, uh, they have a chance to generate one of those coral structures that you can also just find in a warm ocean biome. So this way yeah, you can get coral blocks and sometimes there's a small chance 
that a sponge block would also generate within the structure a wet sponge block. So this way they're also renewable. The chances I think really low. So the farm also wouldn't be too fast. Um, unfortunately, Mojang hasn't added anything to make, for example, dragon heads renewable. Maybe if you kill a dragon, you get a dragon head. Kind of no-brainer. But I definitely also consider um, a lot of things when they decide to make something renewable or not. Maybe in case of the corals, they don't want people to grieve the coral reefs. But on the other hand, you're kind of forced to do it to get the blocks. So I'm not entirely sure what's the, the lesson to be learned here. Um, yeah, and also maybe they think if you make sponge renewable, then your first ocean monument would be too easy to conquer. If you have dry sponges, it's usually quite easy to dry out an ocean monument and you don't have to fight the guardians. Maybe they want to prevent it. But on the other hand, who makes such a complicated farm to conquer their first ocean monument? It's usually not that hard. Uh, people can do it just with some basic armor. It would definitely be easy for us to add some custom rules, for example, changing a loot table, so dragon would drop a dragon head when killed, quite fun, or enable a carpet feature that we used at 1.12 Patreon server back then, a lightning strike hitting a guardian turns into an elk guardian, which when killed drops a wet sponge to get some of those items, but we usually try to stick to vanilla. But in some cases, like here, the sponges or general items that require a ton of exploring, I wish we would be a bit more relaxed and, and maybe just add a custom rule of just becoming silly. Yeah, the Emerald Orb, which was the toughest, was, was kind of feasible, but some of them aren't really. But anyway, so yeah, we got the name tags. Um, next, um, we also still need some rabbit items. Helga is almost finished designing the farm, so this will be done. Uh, sponges, I'm gonna go exploring one day. Uh, get get the rest, and then pretty much only the mob heads are missing. So we're getting there. And of course, we need an AFK chicken farm. It's really time to cover all the basics. We've done it all on the server. Time to go back to the basics. We made an AFK fish on this episode, since we didn't have one. And soon, we also need to make a chicken farm. Obviously, there's super compact designs that are basically just a dozen blocks that we need to place, but it would be a bit boring. So I thought it would be a nice idea to make a custom chicken farm that yeah, is maybe a bit more fun. Uh, not not always the same designs. So there will also be a, a little challenge on the Sidecraft server. Each member can make their own chicken farm and then we'll probably decide yeah, which one we build. So there will be a couple designs to choose from and the could be the funniest one, the most efficient one or whatever. Uh, will be on your chicken farm. This might be yeah, material for the next episode. Alright, so that's it for today. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye!